Suda. We're still here. It's been a year. A lot of things can happen within one year. But we are still here. We invite all of us also now to acknowledge the presence of God. And all of you joining us now on television, wherever you are, and we will be nagdadaanan in this very moment. Just acknowledge the presence of God, wherever you are. Let's bow our heads in prayer and just say, Father, you are here. Ama, narito po kayo. Jesus, you are here. Jesus, narito ka. Holy Spirit, you are here. Banal na Espiritu, narito po kayo. Mama Mary, you are here. sense of God right here right now ano man yung pinagdadaanan ano man ang yung sitwasyon He is always one with us one with you kasama mo ako acknowledge the loving presence of God. And brothers and sisters, my Lord, this is all we just thank the Lord and ask for His help. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Salamat po, Ama. Jesus, salamat. Thank you, Jesus. Especially when it is hardest to say thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Salamat po, Spiritu Santo. Mama Mary, thank you. Salamat po, mahal na ina. Guardian Angel, thank you. Maraming salamat po, Guardian Angel. God is here. God is there, wherever you are. I'm always one. Son and to the Holy Spirit. And Mama Mary, thank you. Salamat po, Mahalaina. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. As we pray for conversion, as we ask the Lord to bless us and forgive us, as we pray our families, our loved ones who need healing, forgiveness, conversion, or enlightenment, 
to pray for our country, the Philippines and our people. Almighty Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who need your mercy. And today we also pray and remember our departed relatives and friends. There were people who were with us last year and are no longer with us this year, precisely because of the passion, death, and resurrection. We believe we will meet them again. So we pray for them and ask for their most powerful intercession. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. <clears throat> may they rest in peace. And may we, the living, live in peace. At hindi po natin ating guardian angels. Please remember, we have guardian angels to bless and protect us and guide us. So we pray the pray we pray as little children, angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day, be at our sight, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. So mga kapatid, we have acknowledged the presence of God. Now let us acknowledge the presence of God in each and every one of us here. Please tell the person beside you, again, I'm happy you are here, happy you are still alive, happy we are together again, and we are still here, in Jesus' name, Amen. And. Uh, we have said it so many times, please count your blessings, not what is missing. Madalas po kasi, we focus on what, what is not there, what could have been, what should have been. And nakakalimutan natin to thank God for what we still have, what we already have. So my dear friends, please count your blessings, not what is missing. So, may I ask you again? Sabi mo yung katabi mo, alam mo, malapad, ay mapalad ka. <laughs> mapalad tayong lahat po. Amen. Amen. So we like to thank God. We should give praise and glory. Palakpaka po natin si Lord, si Mama Mary. And thank you Lord for 19 years, this uh, traditional family recollection at the Miralti Theater has been going on. And God is indeed good, loving, and merciful. At ang ating pong theme this year is about God who is a God of mercy and compassion. Remember, there was a little dilemma on ng MMDA when the Pope was here. They wanted to apprehend him for traffic violations on three counts. Number one, no valid plate number. Number two, not wearing the seat belt. And number three, standing while the vehicle is in motion. But they let him go out of mercy and compassion. Yes, sisters and brothers, we always talk about justice etc. Fine. But please remember, beyond justice is mercy. Somebody once said, as we go on, as we go older, you know, beyond giving a piece of my mind, learn giving a piece of your heart. Because there are people who want to be so right and perfect, and they forget that more than being right, being kind is important. So my dear brothers and sisters, let's listen to our mga shares po ngayon. Listen to them with your heart. I'm sure all of us, especially in the most difficult moments of our lives, 
we all experience mercy and compassion. By the way, life is a journey. For some, the journey is finished. They have arrived. I often wondered, yung mga nauna na sa atin, when they look at us every Palm Sunday, sila Sunny, uh, si Tanko, PL, and, and, and uh, Anita, and I wonder what they're saying. Oh, nandiyan pa pala kayo? Pa Palm Sunday, Palm Sunday recollection pa kayo? Their journey is gone. It's done. But they are never gone. Please remember, it's a journey. Pakitanong mo ang katabi mo, kamusta ang biyahe mo? How is your journey? Okay ba? How's the trip? Alam po niyo mga kapatid, you, you really, your trip really begins when you go out of the highway and the expressway and you go to the small ways, you go to detours, you experience bumps, that's when the real journey begins. By the way, wala pong comfortable journey. Ha? No matter how we do it, how we try in life, the journey will not ever, ever always be comfortable. Gusto mo palagi naka-aircon, walang traffic. Mga iba pa nga, kahit mamatay, naka-aircon pa nila. Cremation niya, gusto pa may aircon yung room. I mean, hey, there will never be a comfortable journey. So, let's face it, Mayroon po at mayroon part of the journey that will be difficult. But the assurance is there. Be still and know that I am God. Especially at that point when you are suffering. As I speak, Cesar Lisa, XBD, going through bone cancer right now, joining us on PTV4. Father Willie Valiegas, liver cancer, when every movement is painful. It is precisely at those points when the Lord tells us all, I am one with you. I am a God of mercy and compassion. As we speak right now, those of, we, of us who experience sinfulness and being fall, uh, fallen, being weak, being persecuted, I am one with you. More than ever. More than ever, mga kapatid. Our God is a God of mercy and compassion. And please remember, mga kapatid, we have received more than we have achieved in this life. You talk about achievements, about your virtues. That's really nothing compared to God's love and mercy. Malipo, when you begin to be proud and say, well, I'm a good man, I am a virtuous person, I've made good in life, I'm rich. Excuse me, that's nothing compared to what we have received. So the key, the key so that we will really experience God's love and mercy is humility. Let's go back to humility as we start the Holy Week. We come before the Lord and say, Thank you, Lord. Salamat po for your love, your blessings. And thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, your mercy. And thank you, Lord, for the many chances and the hope you give to each one of us. One with you. Always one with you. Especially in the most difficult moments of your journey. With your friends, welcome, God bless you, and Mama Mary loves you. Ngayon pong linggo ng Palaspas, ang mga pagbasa po ay ukol sa isinulat ni San Marcos, Kabanata 14 at 15, mahaba. Ang pagpapakasakit, 
mula sa huling hapunan hanggang sa daang krus, hanggang sa kalbaryo, hanggang sa pagkamatay ni Kristo at muling pagkabuhay. Nais ko pong kunin ng isang maliit na bahagi ng pagbasa nito ngayong linggo ng Palaspas. Magsitayo po tayong lahat. Sumain niyo ang Panginoon ang pagpapahayag ng mabuting balita ayon kay San Marcos. At nagdilim sa buong lupain mula sa tanghaliang tapat hanggang sa ikatlo ng hapon. Nang mag-iikatlo ng hapon, si Jesus ay sumigaw, Eloy! Eloy! Lama sabakani! Na ang ibig sabihin, Diyos ko! Diyos ko! Bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Narinig ito ng ilan sa mga nakatayo roon at kanilang sinabi, Pakinggan ninyo, tinatawag niya si Elias. May tumakbo at kumuha ng esponha. Ito'y binasa ng maasim na alak at pagkatapos ay inilagay sa dulo ng isang tambo at ipinasipsip kay Jesus. Sabi niya, Tinan natin kung darating si Elias upang ibaba siya. Sumigaw ng malakas si Jesus at nalagutan ng hininga. Mga kapatid, ang mabuting balita ng ating kaligtasan. Palakpakan po natin ang salita ng Diyos. Magandang buhay po sa inyong lahat. Ako po si Father Jerome Marquez, SVD, at ikinagagal ko na sa araw na ito, linggo ng Palaspas, natitipon tayo rito sa Meralco Theater. Madami rin palang pumupunta rito. Marami rin palang nais makinig, manalangin, magpuri, at magbigay pansin sa ating pagsalubong dito sa Semana Santa. Alam ninyo, napakahalaga ng mga araw na ito sapagkat dito ating muling sinasariwa ang pagpapakasakit, ang kamatayan, at ang muling pagkabuhay ni Kristo. The passion, the death, and the resurrection of Christ. Sa aklat mo ni San Juan, kapag sinabi ni Jesus that the hour has come, ang tinutukoy niyang oras ay ang oras na ito. Ang pagbibigay niya ng kanyang sarili sa paraang daan ng krus hanggang doon sa kalbaryo. This is the hour. Paano po natin babasahin, iintindihin, at uunawain ang bahaging ito ng Semana Santa, ng mga mahal na araw. Some 21 years ago, I was a young SVD deacon assigned at a relocation area in Bulihan, Silang, Cavite. It is a resettlement area established by the former First Lady Imelda Marcos, known to most of us as Coveta, Coveta Village, dahil ang sinimulang itinayo ay puro Coveta. We had an SVD mission there. As a young deacon, part of my work is to, co to celebrate and prepare people for the sacrament of matrimony. One day, a couple came to the parish. They had been living together for five years. And so this couple also already had a five-year-old child. And so they approached me and asked me, Reverend, pwede niyo po bang kami ikasal? Matagal na po namin hinihintay ito. Limang taon na rin po. May hiya na rin kami sa aming anak. Handa na kami. And so we were all very willing to assist them. 
canonical interview, seminar on marriage, even prepare them for confession and confirmation, until a week before their marriage, the man died. And so the woman grieving came to the parish and informed me and said, Rev, namatay po ang aking magiging asawa. Pwede niyo po bang ituloy ang kasal? Nag-isip-isip ako at ang sabi ko, Ako, wala po yatang sakramento ng kasal sa pagitan ng buhay at patay. Pero, gagawan po natin ng paraan. So I went to their house in the afternoon. Pagsalubong doon sa bahay, nakatrahe de boda na yung babae. Nilapitan ko rin yung kabaong. Nakita ko yung lalaki. Nakabarong tangalang din ng pangkasal. Lumabas din yung kanilang anak. Nakaring bearer. At nagdati nga na ang mga ninang dapat at ninang dapat, pati mga magulang. Pinaliwanag ko muna na hindi po pwedeng ga ga gawin ang sakramento ng kasal sa pagitan ng buhay at patay. Pero sa mga oras na iyon, naniniwala ako, punong-puno ng pag-ibig ang babaeng nais pagpakasal sa patay. At nang tingnan ko rin ang patay, punong-puno rin ng pag-asa na siya'y maikakasal sa kanyang nakasama ng limang taon. Sa isang seremonyang hindi kasal, pero pagpapahayag ng kanilang pagmamahalan, aking ginanap ang espesyal na pag-iisang dibdib ng isang buhay sa isang patay. Siyempre, tinanong ko yung buhay. Kung minamahal niya ang kanyang mapapangasawa, sumagot naman. Siyempre, hindi ko tinanong ang patay. Dahil ayokong sumagot siya sa oras na yun. Pero naintindihan namin lahat na ang ginaganap ay pagkilala sa katotohanan na nasaan man ang lalaking ito at saan din man ang babaeng ito, sila'y nagtagpo, sila'y nagmahalan hanggang kamatayan, hanggang sa muling pagkabuhay. It is love forevermore. And that is how we should understand and take into meaning what Lenten season Holy Week is all about. Ano nga ba ang Semana Santa? Paano natin nuunawain ang daan krus, pati ang pagbibigay ni Jesus ng sarili sa pagkakabayubay sa krus? No other words except to understand it as a God loving us. And a God revealing His love by giving Himself everything that He is, everything that He can to show this is my love. Thank you, Lord. For Holy Week makes meaning. Our sacrifices take a meaning sa iginagapag natin araw-araw sa ating pamilya, sa ipinaglalaban natin pati misyon ng simbahan, pati sa pag-angat at pagbangon ng mga maralita, when we show mercy and compassion, and all these sacrifices only take meaning if understood in one basic spirit, the spirit of the Christ on the cross, a spirit of love. After my ordination, I was assigned to Smoky Mountain Tondo. That was in 1995. 
it was still at a dump site. There was an old priest then, Father Beltran, who stayed there for 30 years. My first assignment was Christ the King, a seminary. And I told my superiors, Bata pa po ako, wag mo na sa seminaryo. Ayaw ko pong magbantay ng love life ng mga seminarista. And then they asked me to go to St. Jude Parish. And then I said, Ay, pag Thursday lang po yun may tao, yung mga hopeless cases. Eh, ayaw, malakas pa po ako, I can work more full time. And so my superior said, Go and find where you can work. And then I saw this Father Beltran and said, Are you willing to take me in to Smoky Mountain? And he said, he lifted his hand, offered it, and said, Welcome. And so it was May 1, 1995. Every time I'm transferred, I only go on a May 1, Labor Day. And as I entered, I stopped at Honorio Lopez Street. Pagbaba ko, dala ko lang isang bag. Wow! Sumulpak sa akin yung kahit madami pa ang mga buhok yung aking ilong, hindi kaya ang takpan. Ang sama at sangsang ng amoy. And we were living on top of garbage. On my first day in Smoky Mountain, yung paako na mula. On the second day, yung katawan ko na mutla. On the third day, yung ulo ko na mutla, parang awit ng bata. Paatot, balik at ulo, lahat na mutla. And so I told God, Lord, kung ayaw mo sa akin, idiretso mo itong allergy. Aalis ako. Pero kung gusto mong magpatuloy, alisin mo ang allergy ito. Natakot ang Diyos sa akin. Kaya kinabukasan on the fourth day, I was washed with no allergy at all. And I stayed there for three years just doing what? My best years in life. Just being available to people. And I realize that is the mercy and compassion that I can do as a young priest. Just making myself available to anyone. Minsan, may nasunugan. Pinapunta ako ng parish priest. Masunurin pa ho ako nun. Abay, nang makita ko yung lugar niya ay yero na lang nakabagsak sa sahig tapos dala-dala ko'y pang basbas sabi ko ito sa aking sakristan hindi yung sakristan naririto kanina <laughs> pakitanggal yung yero nasunog pagbukas ko ng yero ang nakita ko'y daga kinakain yung ulo ng nasunog na mama dinisalan Winisikan. And I said, Lord, this is the last stretch of dignity that I can give to this poor old man. Ang huling hibla ng dangal ng iyong anak na pwede kong ibigay. He may not have it for being poor, but I bring it by blessing him on the spot. Pinatawag ko yung anak niya dahil sa bulihan ka dito para kunin ng kanyang amang nasunog na kinakain ng daga. These are all experiences telling me what? Just be available. Wala akong na-save nung ako'y nasa Smoky Mountain kasi kahit ano ibibigay ko. May lalapit na babae, buntis. Walang pangbayad sa ospital. Pag may talks, meron akong makukuha, ibibigay ko. So yung pisasabihin ko doon sa babae, ano ba naman yan? May anak ka naman. Inyo ang sarap. 
Akin ang hirap. <laughs> Pero kailangan kong turuan kahit awa at pagmamalasakit. Mga kapatid, sa araw na ito ng mahal na araw, hindi lamang sa pagmamahal ipinakilala ng Diyos ang pagbibigay ng sarili. Sa bawat pagkakataon ng awa at pagmamalasakit, ipinapakita natin ang katotohanan ng magmahal. Lalo tigit sa mga aba, maralita, walang lakas at eksepuera ng lipunan. Siguro sa mga araw na ito ng ating pagninilay, maitanungan natin sa ating sarili, marunong pa ba akong mahabag? Marunong pa ba akong magmalasakit? Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Yes, my name is Lance Raimundo, and uh, thank you very much, Father Jerry and friends, for having me here this morning. It's a very huge honor. Happy Palm Sunday. Okay, um, I'm here to talk about my realizations after last year's accident. I'm here to talk about how I learned how love, family, forgiveness, hope, and faith can turn any tragedy into a triumph. I also learned how to identify the miracles that happen in our lives every day because I found out that miracles do happen every day. It's just for us to open our eyes spiritually to realize that God is actually talking to us. But for me to be able to impart this message, I would like to recall my accident and a little bit of how my life was before that and how I went through it and what's happening now. So I'm, uh, I would consider myself still an aspiring actor kasi bago pa lang ako sa industriya. I started out year 2008. Um, for young people like me, we're very ambitious, very passionate about reaching our goals. And we'll be uh, humble to admit that uh, young people like us, we have that hunger for recognition, for the world to love us, for the world to recognize us. So that was what was fueling my, my passion when I was younger. So every year from 2008, I would always try to find projects na iniisip ko, ikakasikat ko ba to? Will it make me the next Piola Pascual or the next John Lloyd? That's, what, that's all I had in my mind. But I've always been a good son and a devout Catholic. But simply, as a young person, we have our ambitions. But year 2014 was a little different because I was actually in an audition for Cinemalaya, hoping to get a big role that maybe I'll win an award. But then something happened. See, Direct Lou Veloso, who was directing the Sinacolo 2014, happens to have been at that, uh, at that stadium. And he saw me and invited me to play Christ for Sinacolo 2014. Something touched me. Nasa, sa moment ng buhay kong yun, Hindi ko inisip yung ikakasikat ko ba to? But it was such a huge honor for me, a humble newcomer, to be invited to play Christ. Na isinatabi ko muna lahat ng mga ambition because the play was going to be held in a very small area. Na mga 100 lang manunood. So I know for a fact that wouldn't make me a star, but the Catholic and me 
showed me the bigger things, the bigger picture that, you know, why are you thinking about these small things on earth when you're given an honor of playing a role of our Savior? So, I, I, I immediately grabbed that opportunity. Kinalimutan ko na nasa audition pala ako nung sinumalaya. And I just focused on not embracing that role. So, um, we started rehearsing, and we were rehearsing for around two months already. And every day as I go through the rehearsal, I pray to God na, please allow me to feel your passion. Kasi hindi to ordinary yung role na, he's not a national hero that, you know, you could play around with a character. He's someone that we should really know before we could effectively portray him. So every day I was praying and praying. And another thing that I was doing, yung cruise, um, because my character has to carry it, during the break times, I would spend extra minutes, maybe 30 minutes, carrying the cross, meditating on Christ's passion. And uh, we fast forward a little bit. Na I invite ko na yung pagkataon ni Cristo, but I realized that if I wanted to portray him very well, I wanted to also somehow resemble him. And I was looking at the crucifix. Christ had long hair. He has facial hair. This pwedeng idaan sa wig yung long hair. Facial hair, I don't grow too much, but you could always put fake beards. But I noticed na si Cristo, being a very humble human being, he allowed himself to be born in a family of manual laborers. Payat siya and, you know, may katawang pang carpentero. So, um, I work out sa fitness first. Parang feeling ko social to. So, lumipat ako sa isang gym na simple lang, na hindi ko papangalanan. The reason why I transferred there is because I wanted to immerse myself in simple living. So, uh, sinabihan ko yung trainer doon. Sabi ko, coach, gusto ko na maging kumukha ng katawan ni Cristo. Mag, uh, gawa tayo ng workout, tawagan natin siyang the Calvary workout so I could, you know, have a hard time and experience it. So, um, he scheduled my first Calvary workout on March 19, 2014. First day pa lang, first day pa lang po ng workout ko, yung pinakaunang salpak ko sa barbell machine, doon nangyari ang aking aksidente. And that was when my life seemingly have ended because when the accident happened it was a 105 pound barbell that fell i wasn't lifting it it was actually hanging on top of me and then the trainer that was supposed to be helping me so he kind of lost his attention on me and it fell on my face and cracked my skull i was left blind disfigured, and also crippled. Ayan. Of course, we couldn't show the scarier pictures. Ito ayos na to because it's uh, upsetting to look at. But the point is, if you look at it with human eyes, all my dreams in life have been shattered. But then, this is the moment of my life or actually the miracle started to unfold slowly. This is when Jesus actually introduced himself to me. Kasi nagulat ako sa sarili ko. Like I said, I'm an, I was an ambitious, um, aspiring actor. So, puhunan natin, of course, yung mukha, yung talent, yung bosses. But I was so surprised with myself that when that accident happened and I realized that everything has ended, uh, na nabulag ako sa isang mata but with my one eye I saw the trainer approaching me crying and I knew he was gonna ask for forgiveness but di ko alam kung saan ko nahugot yun from being a worldly young man but the first thing that I sincerely said from the depth of my soul was coach pinapatawad kita and I knew I was gonna die because my, uh, my skull was cracked and so I could feel myself fading away. So sabi ko, parang, Coach, uh, I just want you to know that kung sakaling mawala ako dito sa mundo, huwag sanang ikasira ng buhay mo ang nangyari kasi hindi mo ito kagustuhan. And when I said that, I was freed. I was released from all the bondages of worldliness. And I just felt a lot of peace. And in fact, I was ready to die. But of course, that's why I said love is important.
important. Naalala ko, of course, yung magulang ko. And I didn't want to just die. No? I wanted to at least reach the emergency room so I could properly say goodbye to my loved ones. But I think it's a blessing because it allowed me to hold on to my life. So let me fast forward to the hospital. I was finally there and I saw my mom, my brother, but like I said, maybe hindi ko pa oras. My doctor gave me two days days to live, but I somehow survived. And the doctor also said that in case I do survive in two days to critical, the surgery couldn't be performed until over a month later because it's super namaga ang buong mukha ko. It was this big. And to operate me would just lead me closer to death. So mas magandang ipahilo muna and just be, you know, in the hospital not moving and just allow time to determine when the other medical procedures could be performed. Because like I said, every day, pabulag mong pabulag yung mata ko, I was deteriorating, but you have to sacrifice certain things. You know, have the patient die or have him blind. The lesser evil is just to have me blind. Day two, um, no, day, the first day when I finally got to the hospital, a second miracle occurred in my life. My family already had a psychiatrist on standby because, of course, they were afraid of my reaction ko the first time I looked into the mirror. Because, uh, like you saw in the pictures, we were disfigured in our face. But I was... Um, having this urge to go to the bathroom, I wanted to pee. I said, Mom, can someone help me go to the bathroom? Pigil sila ng pigil sa akin. Yun pala, parang na, nasa sense ko, nasa CR nga pala, malaki yung mirror, and they didn't want me to see my face. But, um, of course, I was able to convince them to allow me to go to the bathroom, because I also wanted to face the music and see what has happened to me. But I was really thankful to God. I think dahil sa napatawad ko yung trainer at magaan na yung puso ko, the first time that I saw my disfigured self in the mirror, instead of being shattered, I didn't see an ugly face. Nakita ko mukha ng isang tao na binayaan, binayaan pa ng Diyos ng buhay. I saw someone who's still living, and that alone makes me lucky. And the fact that I'm still alive, and I still have a beautiful heart, and I still have my intellect, that face that I saw was a very beautiful face. Because I realized, no, even with that kind of face, and even if I couldn't stand up anymore, who in the world could tell me that my life has ended? With that face, with that uh, physical condition, with a heart that is spiritual and loving, with intellect given by the heavens, that ugly, crippled guy could even be the next president. So we shouldn't limit ourselves because of what we think are our incapabilities in life because no one is cool young in this world. And I just realized that. So with that, I told the doctor na parang doc, when you have the time to operate me, kahit na ikapangit ko pa, just do what you can because life is more important. And I think because they were very calm about it, yung pagkakalma ng doctor, na all they wanted was to put me together, ito yung naging result. <laughs> I would like to share this special experience. On the second day, I probably have slipped into a tiny death because I lost consciousness and all of a sudden I saw flashes of the future. I saw images that eventually, as I went on with my life, nangyari nga. And then all of a sudden, a voice, an encompassing voice that I didn't know where it came from, told me, I heard it, and it said to me, you're only going to suffer for six days because I'm giving you back everything on the seventh day and you still have a mission on this earth. Then I was in the hospital bed and I was wondering, I told myself, is this a dream? But all of a sudden, in the hospital bed, the voice was still inside my head. And sabi niya, if you want to know that it really happened, try to sit down and look at your blanket. So I tried to sit down and when I looked at my blanket, yung effort ko sa pag uh, 
po siguro nagusot yung blanket. Tapos yung pagkakagusot ng blanket was a very vivid image of the face of Christ. And when I saw this, napahiya ako because, I mean, dinala na nga ako doon, kinausap ako, and yet the humanness in me, nagawa ko pang magduda. So when I saw this, I just held on to the faith and sinabi ko, sinabi niya po seven days, kahit na sinasabi ng doktor na one month, it's fine, I'll believe in you instead. And all of a sudden, the next day, I had an executive checkup. Nagulat yung mga doktor kasi lahat ng dahilan kung bakit hindi ako pwede mo operahan ay nawala. And they scheduled my operation on March 25. And to cut the story short, I woke up March 26. I had my vision back. I had my balance back. I had my face back. Everything was back. Tapos nung binilang kong nasa kalendaryo, aksidente ko was March 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and dude, on the seventh day it happened. So, um, for me, I want to share with everyone that the miraculous seven-day healing from someone who's so distorted to being well, most people think that that is the biggest miracle. Kasi yun ang obvious. But the biggest miracle to me, the biggest gift that God gave, He gave it to me on that day of the accident when He taught me the value of forgiveness. Because without forgiving this person, I wouldn't have the calm and the openness and the spirituality to see the beauty of other things in life. You know, God, thank you. I believe that God talks to us every day. You know, even if hindi ko pinatawad yung trainer, kahit na minumula ko siya, this image will still appear on my blanket because God will still reach out to me. But my anger would prevent me from seeing this. Kasi kung galit ako, tingin ko dito ay gusot lang. But because I forgave and I saw the beauty of life, itong gusot na to, my new outlook on life interprets the gusot as the face of Christ. So every day, yung mga gusot sa buhay natin, you know, negative things, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it in the human way and get angry, or look at it in a more spiritual way and look at it as a means of God to communicate with us. And so um, that's the reason why I think the bigger miracles compared to buildings disappearing or you know, dead people rising are the miracles that happen within our hearts because it's, be it's, it's between us and the universe. It's between us and God. And I'm happy to announce that one year later after surviving, tonight, I finally get to portray Christ at the Sinaculo. We're performing at Greenfield Garden District and it's a very huge honor for me to portray him after actually experiencing a deeper understanding of Christ's passion. We will never feel the real pain of Christ. Even if I've been through an accident, katiting lang iyan compared to what Christ has experienced, but he has given me a more humble perspective of it. And I thank and praise him. And I thank every one of you for listening to my story. God bless. Everybody. Morning, Paul. Morning, Paul. It's us again. I'm Coco Laurel, and this is my brother David, and uh, my sister in law Ruby. This is Adele Joaquin, and also Dr. Edgar Unson. Congratulations, it's your 19th year, and uh, we're happy to be here with you because actually this is our 15th year as well. Thank God, praise the Lord, for, for giving us Father Jerry and all of you people here today. Thank you, Lord, for yet another year to be with you, to give you praise, Lord, and to give you glory. And to thank you, Lord, for your great love for us. Thank you, Lord, for, for being here with us at this very moment. We, we, want, to, we want all of you to, to join us as we 
with the Lord in a song as he the song that he that everyone sang when he when he entered Jerusalem. Let us bless his name. Let us bless his name. And uh, we thank God for all the, the angels here, the mission angels, and uh, for all the people here to, today we, we want to reach all to reach out to the people watching here in, in, in the television. Please join us. Maestro Proclaim the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. This is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. This is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. King of Israel, welcome to our hearts. Here to reign in righteousness. O oh, ruler of the world, ruler of the hearts. Now present your throne. You are the King of kings. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Jerusalem to the sons of man, riding on in gentle strength. Oh, come to save your own, come to give your life. The kingdom is at hand. You are the King of Kings. Hosanna! Oh, blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. King of Israel, welcome to our hearts. Here to say in righteousness, O oh, ruler of the world, ruler of our hearts, thou hast sent your throne. You are the King of kings. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Praise the Lord. 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 Thank you so much for coming to earth. Thank you, Father God, for sending this Jesus to save us, to die for us. Thank you, Jesus, for, for showing us by your painful sufferings, Lord, how much the Father loves all of us. Even though at the Garden of Gethsemane, the evil one tempted you not to go through with your sacrifice, but you said, no, I must to show all the world how much my Father loves them. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gift of love. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, making us your beloved. And thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness and your mercy. There is a song that speaks of God's forgiveness. Just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and now I hear you calling me, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to let my soul reflect on the night, to whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, no test that with many 
composers of that song which who lived uh, in, the, in the 1700s <laughs> that's all it's always made me our good friends out there we uh, are so happy to be here today and we just wanted to to reach out to all the people watching and those who are in their sick beds those who have great problems those who have uh, who are frustrated you know we 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 pray at this moment for all the people who are having a hard time in their lives, having a hard time with their big problems and illnesses, those who who are in their going through treatments and, and those who have who've lost their way. Lord, we reach out to the lost and the frightened and the brokenhearted. And just put this this beautiful song that uh, that the Lord would like to sing to you. We we just uh, we want to be used as his as his as instruments to sing you this beautiful song. It's it's a a song which always wants you to remember that God is always with you. Jesus is always by your side. The message is be not afraid. Be not afraid. So many times in the Bible, the angels would come. And always they would say, be not afraid. Many, many times. And I know that this is God's words. These are God's words. And we'd like to sing these words in a song for all of you people out there. Oh, <laughs> 